Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is what is the best facial animation solution for indie filmmakers? That means cheap, fast, and accessible. Let's dive right in. Facial animation is definitely the most challenging aspect in making realistic digital characters. Over the years, there are multiple different solutions that developed to tackle this problem. The latest Way of Water delivered the best facial animation to date in CG render film in my opinion. It was so realistic and well done and made us believe that the blue Navi people actually exist. But only one problem, we can use the tech. So in today's video, I don't want to talk about the most advanced, expensive, or industry leading facial animation solution that nobody has access to and I probably don't even fully understand. But instead, I want to share my experience with facial animation and tell you all about the different solutions either I used in my own production or I tested and R&D'd with my team. The solutions that a content creator actually can have access to in their production or maybe save you some trouble with the ones that I personally think that didn't work or not worth trying. We all know face is very hard to animate and bring emotion into the character. It often takes days to nail a few seconds clip. iPhone AR Kit is probably the most used tool by creators for the facial animation capture. Epic even made an app that you can stream your iPhone capture directly onto your MetaHuman. But unfortunately, the fidelity for ARKit is low. So ARKit tries to interpret every human face movement into a combination of 52 blend shapes. But our face is so unique from person to person and the way we move, smile, talk, speak. So the raw data from the iPhone capture um, is already heavily optimized or we can call it smoothed. So when we plug the low resolution data into Unreal or Maya, no matter how high fidelity the rig is, like MetaHuman in this case, it won't fully unleash the potential of the rig. It only activate the basic layer of a controllers or a part of them. So just like imagine if we put a blurry 360 video onto a 4K screen, it won't look better, it will still look blurry. But even though ARKit is a low fidelity capture, but it does capture a couple things pretty well in my opinion. For example, the eye tracking is really good and big face motion like jaw open, eyebrow, it can capture pretty smoothly. In fact, pretty much all of my short film, I used ARKit plus a lot of post work to get facial animation. I made a short video before on some tricks I used in this facial workflow. In general, I would record a basic performance and focus on getting the timing and the eye direction right, and then bake all the captures onto the MetaHuman controller. But before you bake, you can actually um, choose to shift the clip or trim it and blend them together to tweak the timing just a little bit more or even add a clip on top of another as an additive layer before the bake. Um, it's useful for situations like you want to add a global emotion like add a bit smile to all your animation. After you're happy with the timing and the remix of the clip, uh, you, can act you can directly bake the animation back onto the uh, MetaHuman facial controller and add another additive layer to tweak even further. So there's not too much secret to this step, it's just pure labor. If you want to use ARKit outside Unreal, I've been using this little app called uh, FaceCap, uh, or you can actually use the LiveLink app CSV data. Um, it spits out a FBX format that has 52 blend shapes data, and you can import them into Maya and hook it up with a rig in there, um, either using set driven keys or other method that you choose. And during this step, you can activate as many or as little controllers you want uh, when you're doing the retargeting profile setup. In my opinion, Epic did a pretty basic mapping in Unreal for their AR kit profile to MetaHuman. So there's a bit more juice you can squeeze during the uh, retargeting stage if you want to go really granular. But in general, you might be able to hit a better shape, but the motion is still pretty linear. So check out the motion. You can tell the motion is pretty linear due to the lack of number of blend shapes. 52 is just not enough, even not to even mention for in-betweens. Mm -hmm. 
So now let's move on to some AI driven facial animation solution. The first one I want to talk about is FaceGood. This is one of the HMC FaceGood developed and they sent us for testing and we worked with them a lot last year to feedback on their system. We even break down their system and our facial solution opinion in our talk in SIGGRAPH 2022. Um, I'm sure it probably came across in the videos that FaceGood put out and they work with some other creators as well. In general, FaceGood uses a, a video or RGB input to train their AI neural network and then match it up with a controller combination in the training data set. Later on, when you're feeding a new video or uh, you put on the helmet to stream it live, the AI will generate the controller keys based on the training data. This is a very simplified version of what's doing under the hood. Let's break it down a little bit more so you can understand the AI-driven facial solution, what exactly they are about. And first, let's talk about the data set. We manually created 20 plus more minutes of training data and those are actually just footages of me doing range of face motion and talking, this means eye blink, eye motion, mouth motion, pretty much try to cover everything that my face can do in that 20 minutes. Then track my facial landmark manually for that 20 minutes data. With all the data tracked, then we have to manually retarget those data to MetaHuman controllers. And this is a highly subjective and artistic step. And they can greatly affect the final result. Because AI really doesn't know what a good facial animation is. It matches the input and the output based on your training set, right? So the better the retargeting or more polished the training data is when it comes to the control of the animation, the better the final output AI will generate, in theory. Which is, in my opinion, is the one of the drawbacks with the FaceGood system. There's no standard or ground truth to compare to when we do in the retargeting. So all we can do is try our best to match it up with the facial pose to the plate. And this can be, again, very highly subjective and artistic. It took us over a month to polish that 20 minutes data for the training set. It's very front heavy and it's quite a bit of an investment, to be honest. But regardless, how about the result? Well. It's complicated. From the user experience side, it's not bad. Once you have the AI trained, you just need to fit in the plate and AI will automatically generate the keys onto the MetaHuman rig very fast. And you can live stream the face into Unreal Rig as well. But in terms of the result, when we fit in the same plate that we use for training, which in now we have the ground truth for, which AI generated keys somehow only hit about 60 to 70% of the fidelity of the ground truth, which is less than ideal. And you can see here the jaw probably will open less and the mouth movement is less. Sometimes the eye doesn't blink properly. And why does that happen? Here's my assumption. When you compare the tracking points from FaceGood versus something like Cubic Motion, and this is from the Matrix Awakened demo behind the scene, you can tell that FaceGood samples a lot less facial landmarkers. So in this stage, the tracking data already contains less information of what my face is actually doing, especially around the mouth area. So that's uh, first stage compression. And the second stage compression might happen during the AI training. Imagine in the 20 minutes of data, my eyes might blink a hundred times and each time it blinks a little bit differently. So when AI trains through those data, it will pick the average of this motion and sometimes it might not understand what the jaw open is, so it will over smooth it and therefore you will see that when the jaw is supposed to open, now it only opens half. And that happens pretty much to big motions like uh, a smile or eyebrow. Uh, jaw, I think, is, is the most obvious one. You can see the clip. Okay, so why did I go into such a depth to talk about the FaceGood system? Well, in my understanding, all of the AI-driven facial solutions on the market right now applies the similar principle. They may train on different data set or the AI algorithm might work slightly differently, but the big stage of operation stays the same. You track the face and you retarget the face, go through the training and AI spits the output. And I want to note that the retargeting step is just a rabbit hole that can go really, really deep. Um, for example, iPhone uses a preset profile for key mapping to a MetaHuman rig, and FaceGood is manually retargeting by the artist, and the Ziva uses a 40 scan data as the ground truth to back off to the controllers. Avatar looks like they are using a stereo head mount camera to produce a 40 mesh approximation as the ground truth on the stage. 
Regardless, with those key stages in mind, tracking, retargeting, training, and output, next time when you see a new face solution with an AI component in it, uh, without really knowing how it's working under the hood, you can take a look and see what's the input. Is that a single camera or a stereo camera? And what it needs from you in terms of the retargeting. And you can somehow predict what the output is going to be. So with everything that we discussed, it is pretty apparent that AI will play a huge part in this facial animation solution moving on in the future, but also for the overall transformation of the creative industry. And for us indie filmmaker, I don't think there is a way for us to create the amount of the data or to the quality of the data like 40 scan to train the facial animation AI to compete with those existing solutions. And for now, I will just stick with the iPhone AR kit and wait for someone to fully unleash the power of those devices. I mean, you got a LiDAR here and it, you got depth sensor in the front as well. So potentially it can provide all the data you need to train a much better AI model and will result in a much higher fidelity facial animation. And also I want to do a deep dive into the facial rigging system, especially MetaHuman Rig, to share with you the R&D work my team did over the years. I'm actually working on something with my friend Tobias and David, starting with a very ghetto scan rig in his basement. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you found this video is helpful. I'm trying to share everything I know about the industry with you guys. I firmly believe the more people have the knowledge, the better and the faster progress can be made. So make sure you subscribe and hit like if you enjoyed it. And leave a comment about any questions you have. And also make sure you check out this lighting tutorial I did in Unreal about how to create a realistic night rainy scene. I'll see you in the next one.